For the month of March, we're looking to highlight other fellow content creators. It doesn't matter if they write a blog, do a YouTube, or maybe even they just create tools or some unique community. So first up, we have Jarek from Evergreen Stables, most well known for either the Zed Daily Show where he covers a ton of interviews and recently been doing a lot more tournament and race coverage while we wait for the up and coming breeding changes and for the one to discover, own, and purchase a diamonds, the infamous Z2 legendary Nakamoto. We go into all kinds of fun things like some details and tidbits about his personal life and personal goals outside of Zed Run. Also some things that he has up and coming but uh, overall, it's a great conversation, you know, talking to another fellow content creator about what it's like to make content. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, so after recording 60 episodes or 60 plus episodes, what have you learned as a content creator that you weren't expecting to? Man, um, I don't know. It's just you wouldn't, me personally, like, right, like you... I wouldn't expect people to watch me, right? Like what I'm sure with anybody, like we we don't find ourselves interesting. Right? But once you <laughs> right. turn on the camera and just just point the camera at yourself and talk into the to the microphone, then you become interesting, right? And people watch anything nowadays. So what did I learn? I learned that if you just get in front of the camera, be yourself and just have a good time, like some people can relate to you, some people will like to watch you, some people won't like to watch you, but you can you can slowly over time build build a an audience or a fan base and you've done really well with that like you haven't been recording much longer than myself and you're closing in on that thousand subs mark pretty quick so you've been doing a great job with it and you're definitely entertaining like i enjoy watching your stuff thank you thank you i think the diamonds aspect definitely adds like a layer like that's mm. what i think about just in in general play to earn when people get special assets you can you, one you can leverage those right to breeding deals with other people but then like there's not much people that can stream like a redwood city classic or can hop into all this stuff so um if you get a special horse like that um people want to watch you know it was same with like uh when the know your horses guys were streaming they would they would race vanilla bean and just people love to watch them race vanilla bean yeah and that too it's kind of like in, in sports you know a team that only has diehard fans from like 20 years ago back in the glory days picks up a, a star player now all of a sudden everybody's about it and buys jerseys right right exactly exactly <laughs> once once they win a super bowl like nobody liked the seahawks like where i'm from right like we played against yeah. the pittsburgh steelers one time in the super bowl and lost but once we won like man everybody was a seahawks fan they shut down middle school for the seahawks parade <laughs> like all that good stuff everybody was a fan jerseys were flying off the shelves well, I grew up in Seattle in the 90s, so I was a Seahawks fan before they were All good. Right. Joey Galloway, oh. Ricky Waters. Yeah. I like it. That's OG. So, just like the Mariners. I like the Mariners before uh, before A-Rod got drafted. That was just the icing mm. on the cake back then. Still couldn't beat the Yankees, so it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. So now when the Mariners win, just watch. Everybody's going to be a Mariners fan now. Oh, my goodness. Mariners are all that. Season tickets are going to be flying off the shelves. Now, how kind of speaking on that aspect, how excited are you for the point where Zed Run becomes mainstream enough to where people know the horses by name? And like you could be, you know, five, six, seven, you know, how many years down the road it is, people know diamonds in conversation and like show up to see diamonds. It won't be, you know, what's this weird digital horse racing thing? It's like literally people want diamonds. Right. Well, I don't like. I see him going mainstream. Yes. Like I he kind of like he is like a, in the Zed sphere, he is a household name now. So mm -hmm. it's really just banking on Zed going to where all of us envision it to go. Yes, I think we get there for the majority of people to either know about diamonds. I think uh Zed betting has to become really big, right? To where people mm -hmm. there's these big, big, big races that draw in a lot of eyeballs, either like I don't know. I don't know how they do it. They could just make it a big event. And then once people can bet and then also win money alongside diamonds, I think that's when um, horse names start to become very household. Yeah. That, no, that's a good point. Until until diamonds hits their, uh, their doubt and button on a sure thing race. 
and decides to right. the other side of variance. Yeah, and then they're like, oh shit, we'll just go fucking bet on Princess of Power and something like that. Yeah. Now, uh, how hard is it keeping up with the Daily Show? Because I know when you were first talking about doing it, I'm like, oh my god, this guy's crazy. They're... I would love to be able to do that, but just as far as like staying organized enough and consistent enough to produce that, like how how's the experience been? It's it's been good. Like with anything, it's it's hard at first, right? Like um, but you get better over time the more you do it. Why I went daily is because I quit my job, right? So I didn't want to just quit my job and only race diamonds, right? Like I didn't feel like I was waking up and and going to work or at least working for myself, but realizing that um I could do YouTube and all this stuff, right? Like I was just like, all right, well, I'm gonna be playing the game anyways. I have something that a lot of other people don't have. So then that's just entertaining to watch. So I was like, all right, well, I can just stream Monday through Friday. So in the current state right now, it's not the most fun, right? Like race generation isn't the greatest. Paid C1s aren't going by. They take forever to fill. Um, so it's it's I'm kind of freestyling right now. Like I'm not doing the podcast until um after the breeding update because i think the lay of the land will change people's breeding theories start kicking back up you know people are going to start getting hype about the game but um uh if we say like the past few months it, it's been really good right in the current state right now not the best i'm not having the most fun doing it like solo streaming but um it can it can kind of be a it's a grind right now it's a grind to do it that's why i was just kind of like i didn't feel like doing it today so i was like I'll pass, but um, a few months ago, it didn't feel like a grind. Now it kind of feels like a grind, but I think it's just because we're waiting for one big update instead of three small ones. Yeah. Now, I saw you've been doing a lot more uh, tournament coverage and stuff. How's that been as far as, like, do you approach the, the solo broadcasting any differently than when you're doing an interview or something like this, or... Is there a different mindset behind it or you just kind of hit record and let it flow? I guess with the interviews, my my goal is to like uh, show who the stable is and then also draw some information that will be good for the broader community that plays this game. When I, I guess kind of, mm, I don't know, when, I, when I'm when i solo streaming, I guess I'm just kind of engaging with chat, talking to them, talking to them reviewing their horses like helping them out while also racing my horses so i guess pre like there's more preparation uh, for an interview when i solo mm -hmm. stream i'm just like all right what's today uh, okay today's a keep on winning tournament i'll try and race some horses and i'll just blabber about whatever try and qualify look at people's horses talk about what's someone's favorite movie if you could pick one movie to watch for the rest of your life just random questions just yeah. engaging with chat now, I think that's important, too, because, you know, a lot of the people that we interact with in this community, like it's a lot of them, we never get to see their face, you know, unless we develop a, a pretty good connection. And then we do a lot of chatting elsewhere. So I think it's good to be able just to tie in those little aspects that remind us that we're human. Right. Now, when everything was like up and rolling hard, <laughs> I know I struggled with it. How big of a struggle was it for you to stay on top of creating your own content? stay on top of racing and breeding and everything you have to do to keep your stable running and then also be a content consumer for everybody else that's making stuff. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a grind. That's why I went away from the, the just straight up videos because those take so much work with the recording, editing, thumbnail posting. I was like, fuck that. I'm just going to live stream <laughs> and go it. Cause it's way easier, right? Like yeah. you don't got to edit. You don't got to do a thumbnail. Like, I mean, I have my thumbnail, but it's it's a blueprint, right? So all I got to yeah. do is change whatever episode number it is and we're rolling. Um, so I, I, you know, I, uh, I, I guess going back to your question earlier, what changed? Like I, I adapted from uh, the standalone videos to more of a live stream base. Now, what type of content do you think is missing from the ecosystem as a whole? Hmm. Is there anything that you wish you could you could consume as a as a consumer of content? a good question i i watch i i watch pretty much everybody i think uh what would be fun would be like pink slips you know mm -hmm. like high stakes pink slips i don't we're not there yet right and you you're gonna have to find people that got the balls to do it 
But yeah. I think that's you like those big bets, man. Whoever, <laughs> yeah, ex- right. But um, I don't, I don't know. Pink slip. I think pink slips, just like the TV show Pink's, right? Like they would just drag race cars. Whoever yep. won, you get the car. So that I, if you just steal from that, like there's already a an audience for pink slips. Now you add it to Zed Run, and let's say like it's some known horses, like that could get pretty fun. Yeah, even if it was just like temporary ownership, and you could build some sort of you know, the trust system or use the horse renting system where it's like, all right, well, you lost this month. So now this stable gets to run your horse for the next month straight and you don't get to do shit with it. I like that. I like that. So that way, you know, that way you can, you can put ring in the diamonds to a pink's race, but you don't have to worry about losing, you know, potentially a, a five, six figure asset. Right. You're just going to lose whatever cash flow you could have got for that month. And then you get the horse right back, but it's, yeah. it would make for entertaining content. Oh yeah. Especially if some some new guy came in with an unknown horse and sweeped everybody up. Right. You're like, God damn, who's this guy? He's holding on to all of our horses right now, just running class one or something like that. Sure, that could even be a strategy to keep horses out of the tournaments and other big races. But like, yep, Diamond's going to get benched for a week. Yep. Oh, good point. Good point. Good point. That's a great point. Yeah. Is there any type of content that you wish you could create or anything you wish you could get involved in? That you've seen work in the real world or real sports broadcasting or anything that's just logistically not possible. I think um I think when we get to like big races or Zed meetups, I think just like interacting with everybody that wants to, like a Zed basketball game or a, a Zed two hand touch, right? For mm-hmm. for money or for ETH or something like that. I think uh shit like that'll be a lot of fun or like I don't know, like a game show, like just whenever we like really start meeting up and if they ever get to that, right. To where there's like, all right, when we have seasons, if the season finale winners get flown out to Vegas and uh, you know, like you can just, I would like to make a vlog out of that. You know, I think that would be entertaining content. I heard someone say it was souls vanish actually. Like a lot of people lose in poker, right. But the guys at the top make it entertaining to where, even though you're losing majority of the time, you, you still have a good time watching the guys at the highest level because yeah. they make it entertaining. Especially if you're a, a fan of the craft and, and the game, right? A lot of people spend exorbitant amount of money just to participate in things that they're never going to be able to make a return on just because it's, they enjoy it. A hundred percent. Right. It's, 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 it's lifestyle. Some people like to, to just buy stuff cause they like it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I like breeding horses that probably aren't going to work together just to see what would happen. Most of the time, it there's always work. the chance, right? There's always <laughs> right. There's always the chance you got a Steph Curry or who knows what. That's that's the fun part of the game, and like there's always the chance that you could change your life with one horse to where, like you see it, people quit their jobs. Like I saw LGAD today, like he was like, "All right, I'm going full time Zed." Like so, as a new person, like that's really attractive, right? To to see that. And to see that those possibilities are there, so that gives you reason to breed a horse, buy a horse on secondary, and to just stick around. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to when everything's consistent and stable enough we can see more things like the digital derby. Like that more traditional sports broadcasting type of environment, I think is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think there's just so much stuff that we don't even know, like... Oh, of course. We don't we don't even know how big this could be if it blows up, right? Like a lot of people were bullish on like the dot com, right? They they thought the internet would be whatever it was, but a lot of people didn't expect to be able to hit a phone hit a button on your phone and then something called Uber shows up outside your door. So there's right. a lot of shit that we don't see down the pipeline that could just blow our minds. Right. No, I definitely agree with that. What uh so you've interviewed over 30 people now. What's an interview that you wish you could get that you haven't been able to yet? Whether it's just time matching up or uh, some of these people just don't want to come on camera yet. Good question. I've tried to get Shady Lane to come okay. come on and walk me through the Zeds tool. I think yeah. uh, I think that, that would be a really great conversation. Uh, I haven't reached out to Poseidon yet. Hmm. Just... Uh, but obviously that would that would be a good conversation with Poseidon. So we'll see. He's kind of in the background right now of 
content creation. He's still playing the game though. So we'll see. I might reach out to him one day. That that would probably be a good chat. Um, but Shady Lane for sure. Or yeah, Shady Lane. Okay. Yeah, that's actually on my list for uh for this month too. So we'll see if we we can't get him to come out of the woodworks. Yeah, you could be the first one to pull him out, man. Yeah. Or maybe you. It don't matter who gets them first, as long as we both I'm get, just, get a little bit of time, right? I'm holding after the breeding update, so I'm just I, solo streaming until enough. until the breeding update, and then you know it's 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 uh I feel like the game will pick up at that point, and an interest in in watching content will pick up at that point as well. Yeah, how good have all the tools been? Like even like I remember when Know Your Horse was super clumsy, like six eight months ago. And like now it's a lot smoother than Haku came out. Like I know you remember back when Haku wasn't even out and now they have their own marketplace. And then you have things like Shady Lane. And then there's a new tool that I recently found. Um, I don't even remember the name of it. What the heck's the name of this one? But um, like Brand how crazy tool? is it? Um, I don't know how old it is. It's something I have never seen before, at least. Um, UnstableSteeds.com. It's uh. Yeah. They do things with ranking horses. They do uh, almost like case studies on uh, head-to-heads matchups and different types of matchups and stuff. I'll send you the link and put it in the description. All right. But you know, even even Zedge, you know, the the price isn't too crazy high for someone who's going to be breeding a lot of horses. Like it's super affordable. Like how? Like I can't even imagine how much work goes into some of these tools. No, yeah, that that's too much, way too much. That's over my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. The, how much do you use a lot of the tools, or have you in the past? Like, I know you haven't expanded your stable too much, so once you know your horse, you kind of know your horse, right? Right. I think KYH is like the Google of Zed. Like, that's just, you know, that's peanut butter and jelly to Zed run. Mm-hmm. Um, Haku Marketplace looks like it's going to probably overtake open sea at least for zed sales right that yeah. looks like that'll probably be the place where that's done but my, my favorite tool has just always been know your horses 100 percent. i do enjoy um what are some other tools i enjoy looking at uh, yeah i guess it's just know your horses yeah do you use any of the ranking like lar or some of the older stuff that's no longer available are they down now zed Lee? No, I think they're still up, but I know there's been some in the past um, that I don't think are up anymore. Um, yeah, though. So yeah, there's like premium carrots and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that I like that one. I mean, I liked it because diamonds diamonds was on the front page, right? So it was like, hey, yeah. somebody told me that, and I'm like, what? Pre- oh, cool, top ten, right? Um, so th- yeah, I liked it because of that. Uh. But I just think KYH is just that that's peanut butter and jelly to Zed. Yeah. Well, they're also, you know, first to the market in the way that they did what they did. And then we kind of learned how to use it. And then from there, everything's kind of a little bit foreign, right? Right. Now, is what, uh, so I know you're waiting for Breeden to come out before you start doing interviews again. Are you intending to just kind of stick with the daily show in its current format, or are you looking to kind of expand into different types of stuff, or you just kind of grow as need comes? Yeah, I guess I, I'm not sure. I guess Monday through Friday is a kind of a grind, but it, it does give me something to to wake up and do. Uh, I know when I do interviews, I won't stack them back to back anymore, just because I mm-hmm. feel like some people, you know, like you they don't get the the views that they deserve, right? Because then I'll just there will be another interview to coming out tomorrow and then it's 50 interviews down and it's like, Oh, okay. You know, like not everybody would um, get their time to shine. Right. So, yeah, I think I'm going to put some more space in between them. So, um, you know, just people can watch everybody. Yeah, and that's kind of been kind of been the hard thing being a host is, doing what you can to serve your community by producing the volume of content that they would enjoy, but at the same time, not doing it in a way that disservices the guest. You know, that's kind of one of the reasons why I really wanted to, to wait to start having more creators on from the creator aspect, just because I knew I was really small and the Zed community is fairly tight knit. So a lot of my followers is everybody that's already following you. Right. So like, I wouldn't really be bringing as much value as I'd like having you on. So 
I'm kind of happy to have a little bit of momentum now and hopefully we can, we can expand everything together. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, damn, this has been flying. <laughs> it's a good conversation, man. That's what happens. Like you just time portal and two hours later and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Has, uh, has diamond won any big races lately? I was going to try to stay off the diamonds talk, but we're here. Let's do it. It's all good. He won a hundred dollar, 2,600 meter last night. So it was like $750 payout. I think February was our best month, uh, with the mm-hmm. 1.7 price, 1.75 profit. We hit the one, a $500 buy-in and, um, he was just, he was just hot last month. And, um, yeah, he's, 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 he's been turning it up lately. Surprising me actually. I, I was very surprised. With anything like heading into these these the with these changes, it's it's nerve wracking, right? Because I have a lot. It's like he has a diamonds has a lot to lose, right? So like mm-hmm. I got scared, not necessarily with like a jailbreak. Um, that didn't really scare me. It, he was just kind of just destroyed his way up to class one, and he was looking like an L shape for a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting into like breeding update and all the, and surface preference update, those kind of scare me a little bit but i was scared of flames and, and it, it worked out just fine so i'm trusting the team on this one yeah and you've done a really good job of just kind of sitting back and do what you have to do with each environment i haven't seen you kind of losing your shit on twitter like some people and you know it's impressive to see you so even keel with with an asset like you said that has a lot to lose because diamonds might not have peaked but everybody kind of knows it by reputation so couple bad weeks and doesn't quite look the same right and then it's like now is well one there's going to be people trying to break this breeding algorithm the day they do it there's going to be 200 horses bred just from one of the top stables right trying to hit Mm -hmm. an escobar roid rager whatever um so i've talked to people like my main thing is just diamonds getting passed right like is does diamonds get passed or is there more horses like diamonds to where now i can have like a comp to win mm-hmm. whatever that horse sells for, I can be like, okay, do they win at C1 through 1,000 through 26, what it sell for? And like, okay, now I can price from there. Because I've talked to people and it's like, it's so hard pricing him because he's like a one of one at, at mm-hmm. C1, 1,000 through 26 can can win on an A plus run. So it's like, yeah, it's 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 nerve wracking to hold on to. I, I don't talk shit on Twitter, I guess you um i do it more on stream i guess like if i'm pissed <laughs> i think last two weeks ago or last week i was hot so i was just letting it out on stream um it was i think it was right when they did discovery so mm. like if, if i if i'm me if i'm pissed that's why i do a podcast i'm not good with typing and <laughs> yeah, yeah sentence structure like if i just want to say something it's going to come off the top of the dome and i'm just going to tell you how i feel oh twitter makes me look like a bumbling or uneducated idiot Every time I'm posting between autocorrect and I don't know, I, I need a proofreader to kind of go through it myself. Cause for whatever reason, when I read it, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong. But then as soon as I hit publish, I'm like, what the heck was I saying? Right. Especially when you do like voice content, like you're basically just talking in your head. Right. So like, you, yeah. it doesn't matter about run on sentences or commas or periods. It's just like, whatever. So I just, yeah. I, I totally feel you on that one. Like I look like running a dumbass out of, running out of time. space because a one minute rant turned into a five minute rant. <laughs> right. And then you got a thread or something and then I fuck up the thread. I'm like, yeah, I'm sticking to YouTube and <laughs> yeah, I'll voice my concerns from there. I feel you. Speaking of discovery, how, uh, how was that process with a horse like diamonds? Was it just hit C1 where you normally are and wait for everybody else to come so you can fill races? I tried to lose, to be honest. I tried. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, all right, I'm trying to mat. I didn't, like, if I was trying to win, I probably would have just ran him 14, 16, 18. But I went mm-hmm. 1,000, 12, 26, 24. And he was just like, win, 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 win. I'm like, all right, we're going to class one, I guess. So yeah. I was already in class one. I had no problem uh, going back there. There was a lot of horses that shouldn't have been there. That's probably why we had such a good month, because a lot of people were racing paids when probably shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. But, um. Yeah, a lot of the beasts were down and like I went and looked at class two and I'm like, oh, that's a class one race. That's a class one race. Like, oh, I was racing all you guys two days ago. Now they're all in C2. But I'm like, it's uh it's easier competition at the top. But he absolutely just blazed through discovery. 
I gotcha. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing... Like, I like Discovery when it's only new full ecosystem. But I still don't think that even if you blaze through Discovery, unless you have, like, a perfect score, like, there's no way you should be entering Class 1. Like, 10 races isn't enough to understand a horse going up against horses like Diamonds. Like, right. at that point, it's just a gamble. Right. I mean, but if you're good, you're going to find out real quick. But it's, like, how likely is it that... I mean, they like you can always beat diamonds because he can always hit the bad side of variance, right? Yeah. So they that's when you always retire the that. horse and you just put it up on the trophy wall and never race again. <laughs> right. It's 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 gonna it's gonna be interesting to see the future of natural U shapes, how much more diamonds come out, how frequently they come out, and what they're selling for, and if everybody sells them to arbitrage. <laughs> Yeah, he has enough partnerships now. He can probably afford them all. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, don't, don't sell it. There's so much leverage. Like breeding, breeding. You get access to the top mares now. So what does that get you? Now you can potentially breed a monster, right? Even mm -hmm. if you don't hit a filly on whatever you're trying to breed, like with John Bull, the horse I did a Bonnie Parker deal with, right? Like obviously wanted a filly, but it's a colt. But like that, I put him in at minimum, and people take him just because they want access to Bonnie yeah. Parker and a diamonds breed, right? So there's there's a lot of leverage you get through holding holding a horse like that's a that's a, a top competitor, but there's also a lot of money you can be made, right? So you can't yeah. blame people for selling them for whatever. I just think I just look so long term in the game that if it works out how we think it's going to work, like you, you no. can leverage a lot of stuff with a good horse. Are you nervous with the whole uh, breeding decay and diamonds essentially not being able to breed forever anymore now? No, kind, no, and yes, okay. no, because yeah, again, I mean, I guess yes, because I want to see how much is that downgrade going to be after decay actually hits, right? Like, yeah, but that's just the breeding side, so I shouldn't be too. And we still got like thirty six horses, right? And it's not going to count our previous ones, so. Yep. We got a lot of time. That's what, like three years? Is that three years? Um, I think it depends on how they structure it. I don't think they're completely dead set on what the what the quantities are gonna be or how it's gonna work. But gotcha. It's definitely a different different strategy layer, right? Especially with a horse like diamonds, because every time a cover's taken, in theory, the next one's more expensive. Because mm. that's just one less that's available for the future. So you know, I didn't if think you're charging 0.25 now, next breed cycle, it might be 0.3 or 0.35. And then once the first three months are gone, maybe it's only a 0.1 cover, you know, because mm. it's limited. I I see it. Yeah, I think my play is breeding deals um, yeah. for now. Swaps. My like, I don't want to I don't want to sell. Yeah, swaps. I don't want to sell diamonds and because he's an income producing asset, right? Like mm -hmm. I could sell diamonds and buy a house. Like that's what I want to do. I want to buy a house now. I think I do that through leverage, leveraging those breeding deals, saying like get a diamonds and like a terms of engagement, baby, right? Turns out to be a killer. Let's say it's a racer. I mean, like, like I could probably sell that for a good penny and then go buy a house from there. And um, you never know how much monsters he's going to be able to breed or if he is going to be able to breed a monster. So it, it's going to be it's. It's interesting times in the game, man. It's interesting. Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna enjoy that everybody's back to not square one because I f I feel like the first generations of the new breeding algo aren't gonna be much different than what we saw. We might see a couple different looking lottery tickets, like there might be a few less wavelengths running around. You know that random legendary buterin that just pops up out of nowhere and takes people's money. Um, yeah, but I, I don't think Zed would make another change on purpose, at least that completely flipped the game upside down. And then they'd have to go back on what they what they did, kind of like they did with stamina. And when they first relaunched breeding and they had deposit and everything else. So we'll see how it plays out. But everybody yeah. heard it. If you have an extra house that you want to trade for diamonds, he's up <laughs> open for business. I, don't, I still don't think I could do it. Maybe a diamonds <laughs> baby. I got you a diamonds baby. Okay. You want to trade for a house? Hit me up, but uh, yeah, I, I just I can't like. I know I could probably sell him like 
and this may sound crazy to some people, but I, I believe I could sell him for 90 ETH right now. Like, I believe somebody would justify it just because he's a C1 and he can beat anybody on his best run, right? Mm -hmm. And then heading into the breeding update, like, we don't know. So I, I value him around, like, 90 ETH, which is, like, damn near $300,000, right? So, yes, when you ask me, like, if I get nervous, hell yes. Because mm -hmm. this game could die and I could be asked out, right? And like every a lot of people could be asked out. Um, but I, I I think I think holding on to an income producing asset um with the caliber that diamonds is, the variance and the base ability he has, I think it's probably better to take the risk, hold on to him, and and try and breed a killer and then probably cash out from from uh breeding an artois or something like that. Yeah. Well, and like diamonds was expensive because he bought them at the peak of the, the unraced legendary knack market. But based on what you've made, it's not like you're you're actually out, right? You're not over overly leveraged from putting a ton of money in. You're just you'd be missing out on the really high upside if something mm -hmm. if something moves. Right. I th I think they. I I don't know. I don't I don't think any. I heard someone say like it, if if any drastic changes happen with breeding, it probably won't be good. People just want like minimal changes or just to be able to pass down certain traits or who knows what. But we'll see. I think I think I I hope they'll get it right. I, but uh, you can never be a hundred percent sure, right? Yeah. How um, I just lost my train of thought again. You happens to me all the time so <laughs> in this moment right here is when i'll yeah. shoot out the most random question i'll be like uh look at my book and then i just think of the most random shit and then half the time i'm like i don't even know why i asked that question so i know well, as an interviewer I, I know that moment because yeah you gotta like you carry the flow of the conversation right so um my brain farts happen all the time and then i just try and think of the quickest que question to cut out the the dead air yeah and it's always nice too like when you're live because then you have that opportunity to be like all right let's check chat but then when you're pre-recording exactly. it's like oh shit but that's why i don't edit this shit out because like i don't want everybody to think that it's it's all polished because it's definitely not right and it, it shows people you're human right um another good trick is yeah you you took the sip of water that's good like if, if i'm if i don't remember my question i'll just take a sip real quick and <laughs> set it down and in that time i've either remembered it or just blurted out some dumb question What's your favorite dumb question or like you asked it and afterwards like what the hell was i thinking i don't even remember because like they're no. just so like like i don't they're just so random right like i, I don't what know what kind of like, toothpaste do you guys use <laughs> right so it just just i don't know i just ask the most random question sometimes when i lose my train of thought but like because I'll, yeah. I'll go into it i'll be like all right he touched on something i want to talk to like talk about right like if Someone saying it's like racing, like, yeah, we were racing, blah, blah, blah. And then we bred this and then da, 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 right? I'm like, okay, he bred this. I want to touch on that. I want to touch on that. And then when they finish talking, I'm like, shit, what was I going to, what was I going to ask him? And then I just go like totally left field. I'll be like, yeah, so Solana, have you invested in that? And they're like, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, never mind. Like two minutes later, I remember when I was going to ask him and we're already off course now. So I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. So besides the random uh, loss of train of thoughts, what other challenges do you you struggle with as a content creator mm. seem to be reoccurring reoccurring oh man that's it. i guess i i get that quite a bit sometimes where i'll lose like what i wanted to ask somebody uh i i don't know i guess i mm. yeah I, i'm not sure a ask the question again uh are there any reoccurring issues you come across as a creator or things that you struggle with regularly hmm. yeah i guess i guess i guess my struggle would be like would be forgetting what i want to ask because i like i'll research everybody or i'll know i'll have like questions prepared right so mm -hmm. i'll go into the interview knowing about someone and then um trying to just extract as much value as i can from them and then trying to give like insight and feedback to the audience but uh yeah, I guess just yeah, I forget my questions sometimes or I don't know. I try to be on time. I try to, you know, short prepared and all that. So I just yeah. guess, you know, just a few slip slip ups and brain farts. It happens to anybody. I feel like that's going to be a, a horse name coming soon out of my stable. I like it. <laughs> it's 
slip ups and brain farts. Yeah. Or maybe I'll do uh exact or perfect uh brother sister and name one slip up and the other one brain fart. I like it. And then they'll both be super codes. So you can get like a failed super coat, you know, you just there you go. Didn't didn't hit the mark, and then there you go. It's a monster racer. <laughs> if only, right? <laughs> yeah, if it was only that easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, especially with braiding, man. Like you have an idea. You're like, all right, well, I'm going to spend this extra money. This is going to be the perfectly bred horse. Finally, it's going to work out. And you're like, what the heck is this garbage? Like, now I want to sell it, but I spent so much on the breed deal. It's like, I don't even want to sell it. Like, now I really feel silly if I sell it. So it's just like a, it's like an NFT, right? Like you can invest in it and like the shit will tank so hard. You'd be like, just your, your pride and ego is like, fuck that. I'm not selling that <laughs> shit. I'll wait for it. Oh, I don't know. I hope for, hope, hope for a Hail Mary at that point, right? Yeah, throw it in a an unknown state where the people don't know you own and pretend like you never bred it. Right, and then but you <laughs> never know that horse could fucking breed a a a a, a, a mud runner, right? And then you look yeah. back two years from now and you're like, God damn, I didn't see that. Yeah, and it's always fun too. Like I like running into horses that I bred on the track, even if they're not you know great. It's always like, oh, I remember breeding that horse. That was fun. I think that's that's become probably my most my most favorite part about breeding is running into horses that I know that I've bred or given away or something while I'm out there. Right. Especially when you named it, right. Cause like you took the time, you typed that in, right. And now it's mm -hmm. on the screen because of your fingers did that. So it, and then just like, if it becomes well-known, right. Like people talk about diamonds, but like I typed that in to the computer and yeah. it just became a household name or a, a Zed run, like well-known name like that. It's still, it's like I guess it's like a child, right? It's like you, it's your child, and if your child grows up to be famous and everybody knows LeBron James, and you're like, yeah, I picked that name, I I wrote that down on the paper or whatever. It's just a, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, it definitely is. Well, I think we're gonna wrap up, man. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, so it was a good time having you on the show. You. Yeah, man, I appreciate you reaching out. This was a. Uh, this was fun. I appreciate you doing it for the uh, the content creators as well. Yeah, it's going to be a fun month trying to get everybody squeezed in over the next uh, couple of weeks. I, I got a question. I got an answer for you. Technical difficulties. Like, oh, um, I guess as any streamer, that, that's something I struggle with, right? Like, the audio won't show up or I didn't fucking save the file or you got to extract audio from the video to get it on podcast form or yep. so technical difficulties definitely something i've struggled with um but I, I like this mic right here i had it for music the macbook i bought it for uh beats and then the camera is like a actual photography camera so mm -hmm. i didn't plan to have all these things and for it to cook up and to be like for me to use them for streaming but that's just like that's why the audio is good that's why the audio is good that's why the camera is good and um that's why i can run it off a macbook just because um i had i had the puzzle pieces to to position myself and and do this yeah, and, and that's I still running the difficulties. Yeah, and I can't even imagine like being live all the time, like that being your primary content creation, because you can't just like walk away frustrated and try again in a couple hours. Like you got to figure it out on the fly and get your shit up, otherwise you're canceling the show for the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now you did bring up I'll something ask... that I didn't. Go ahead. I want. I'll. I'll ask you after you ask whatever you're gonna ask. All right. So. You have the microphone for music and you have the laptop for beats. I don't think I've heard this side of the evergreen before. The what's, all my what's intro, going on there? The, well, I don't I was just I was just into making beats, you know, like it was I I don't know. Like it was it was something that I got got into and I really enjoyed. Um I've always tried like different endeavors, right? Like I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur in something, but I believe like whatever you're doing it'll work it that that'll it'll work in the future right like it'll benefit you benefit you in the future right so like the audio interface in my macbook even though i was using it for beats like now i know how to the audio interface and how to get it on here and how to do all that right or like yeah. now i know how to use the camera so i believe like even if what you're working on right now doesn't turn out to be like what you actually end up doing in life like it'll still benefit you down the road because you'll have learned all those lessons. But yeah, I was just into making beats and um, 
I, I did use them in some way. All like my intro is I made all those beats. So like okay. the first 10 minutes and then when you see like the loading screen and it says stream starting soon, like, so even though I didn't like post them or make a bunch of money from making beats, I still added it, added it into what I'm doing right now. Mm. And what were you going to ask? Yeah, so I was going to ask you, what was your number? Uh, like, what are your, what are some of the difficulties you run into? I remember seeing that, like you had, you just bought a mic. And then yep. you had like an episode with Ebbs or some that like something like that that got yeah. deleted. I've had those problems as well. So uh, just I just wanted you to touch on those. Yeah. So for me, it's uh, as bad as the <clears throat> as bad as the technical difficulties have been. I think it's more using those as a crutch than it has been actually dealing with them. Because like when I first started out, it was easy to say, "All right, you know, I, I'm not very experienced in this space. Like I've done." A ton of podcast interviews before but normally it's just audio and it's using you know a platform that i'm used to i haven't done a whole lot with you know obs or doing my screen recordings or other things and then because i'm using a uh you know just a very standard quote-unquote gaming laptop which i don't think is an actual gaming laptop they just branded it that way to make it right. sell better um right using it to try to to render my videos and having you know there's been episodes like the danny bananas one i worked on that thing for i think eight days trying to Damn. get the video to render to populate and <clears throat> just having it fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and not knowing a whole lot about anything when it comes to you know doing that type of stuff and trying to find find the solutions and then getting the video to work because like I remember the first one that failed on me and I had a lot of issues with was the arbitrage interview and it spent like an hour and a half rendering. I went to upload it to YouTube and there was eight minutes. I'm like, what the, what's this? Like, I just, I've been working on this, you know, building up the intro and stuff. And that's why I stopped doing the intros that I was doing because it made the, uh, the file size so much bigger and adding those extra, those extra cuts and everything was just making making the videos really unstable when I would, when I'd render them. And then, you know, trying to, and when you're new, you don't even know what questions to ask, mm -hmm. right? Like you don't know how to search what your problem is because you don't even know what's causing your problem, what your problem's called. So, you know, I probably spent like, I don't know, four to six hours just Googling different ideas of what I thought could be going on to kind of stumble through it and kind of figure some things out. I ended up calling a friend of mine who's helped me with video content previously. And she kind of walked me through some stuff that's helped, but sometimes it's just nothing's working and it becomes frustrating because, you know, as a creator, I want to keep up with a certain schedule and a certain cadence or when I have somebody on, I don't want their episode to get loaded up a couple of weeks afterwards, because then what we talk about, you know, it could change with the environment. Like, I think that even happened with our video, even though it was only 10 days, like we were talking about the class system and then they upgraded the class system. So like, it's, it's hard to stay relevant and on top of things when you're having issues that you don't understand. So like the microphone was the first purchase. Um, I do have a camera that probably has a little bit better uh, video capabilities. So I might try working with that instead of using this webcam here in the future and then upgrading the laptop. But it's one of those strange things too, right? Like I want this table to be successful. So at what point do I, I spend money on tools as a creator and at what point do i spend money on purchasing more horses or putting the fiat into the stable to try to make it more successful right so it's, I think, it's one of those really weird balancing x yeah i think it's a good play it's hard to make money off youtube man like you, you got to get that thousand a thousand subscriber and what is it a thousand hours watch time oh, four or thousand is it, hours of watch time four thousand yeah. yeah so i think i found with with podcasts i've knocked the the watch time out of the park Mm -hmm. subscribers is the, is the hard part and um but i i think like if you 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 do it well i like um when you you just you know you just you just you just make good content and just continue to post it right yep. and um i forget what i was gonna say but uh i've had the technical difficulties as well like that that is it is hard to figure those out. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, see, right here, like, I kind of just watched off. See, that's what I did. That's what I do. Hey, it's what hard, I was man. Gonna say, 
um, I think it's good to put the uh, the money into into your stable because then you can extract the money from there and then put it into content creation. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been interesting to try to figure out, and like like for me, it was more using it as an excuse, right? Like, ah, oh, crap, this shit failed. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna wait a day. But the problem is, every single day I wait, it's a disservice to the person that gave me their time because not only are they waiting for their story to come out, but my community is waiting for another video because people who like Zed freaking love Zed. Like there's not enough content for the appetite in the, the ecosystem right now to where people are just burnt out. Like I've never heard anybody say, I can't watch another podcast interview or listen to another Zed run podcast or not read another Zed run blog. I've heard people say I'm burnt out at racing. Now I'm going to go rewatch all the episodes that I watched before. So right. I don't know. It's, it's been challenging. I've been, I've been trying to get my shit together though and find people who know more than me and, and ask better questions. Yeah. Google, Google, all that shit will help too. You know, like I, oh, I figured yeah. out all my problems through either YouTube or, or Google. Right. So it's, 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 it's hard to find like the exact problem you're looking for without like putting a name to it. You got to just describe mm -hmm. what your problem is and type that into Google and trying to see whoever's having those same problems as you. Um, but it's a it's it's a it's a dope time to be alive to be able to to be able to be doing stuff like this to to be able to post content there's a horse racing game people are making a living off of mm -hmm. horses are selling for a, a f ton of money and it's just nobody knows what the future holds right yeah well one thing i wasn't leveraging enough too was i use premiere pro as my editing software even though i don't really edit that much it's more like cut out the beginning cut out the end and publish right. um they have a great tutorial structure and like a little academy that just I wasn't using at all. So kind of stumbling through that and prioritizing time on on uh, education has kind of been more of a focus. Like, and that was kind of a hard decision I had to make um, towards the end of last month and kind of going forward is I don't have too many strong racers and the ones that qualify for the tournaments easily don't qualify in the distances or they're not strong at the distances that you run in the tournaments. So if I'm spending, you know, 40 hours a month running up horses for tournament qualifications, running down horses so that way they can qualify for the next one, you know, 40 hours a month is a lot of time I could spend in education. So essentially benching my free racers that could win tournament money, maybe with enough, you know, swings um, to really focus on, like I said, the education side. It's not a fun experience because I love racing horses, but I think it's going to be what pays off. 100% because if, if your road, workflow becomes, you know, your workflow becomes a system at that point, I right? Guess. Yep. We're, we're cutting out a yeah. little bit, but uh, yeah, it's just, it becomes a flow at that point. Like you don't have to think about like, Ooh, how do I do this? Oh, there's a roadblock. You're just like, oh, okay, boom, cut, edit do all the fancy shit that chateau does right like that's way out yeah. of my league i can't oh man i love his edits and all that smoothie is and yeah he's he's my favorite yeah. youtuber by far just because he's his personality is great and the stuff he does with his camera and the quality of it's just nuts right and i'm just like that's i'm not even gonna try and do that like i that's why i just do the live stream shit like i i i know <laughs> where my strengths are i i can freestyle yeah. and i can just blabber on forever right so like I'll do that. But when it comes to like putting out the quality of content and putting in that much time and the game ages so fast to where you don't know how long that video is going to become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I, I respect the hell out of Chateau because he put some work into his videos. Oh, yeah. And like even touching on that, like getting better and creating flow, like the first intro I made for Lucky Star Stable, kind of overlapping the race footage and stuff, that thing took like four and a half hours to find the races, record the races, get the right camera angles while the horses are racing, then cut out all the transitions and overlay the music and the audio. Like that one took me four and a half hours because my first one. And then I think yours and uh, the one I did for Zed Insights took me like an hour and a half, which was still a really long time for a, a 40 to 90 second clip. But it became that much easier because I, I fought through it the first time and then I, I didn't kind of throw my head in too early. Right. And then you might even realize you're doing it the hard way, too. Like, I found no. out a lot of shit like, oh, I don't have to cut out like the thumbnail like this. I can just go boom, boom, boom. And then the thumbnails cut out. And what took me 40 minutes last time takes me five minutes now. Right. So, yeah, you, you live and learn. And that, that's the beautiful thing about this is like 
you're rewarded for the amount of work you put in. Like if you show up at a nine to five job and you put in, you learn about doing this, you learn about doing that. Like, Hey, I learned how to do this today, which, which got me a certification. Like there's like, there's like, you're still probably going to be getting paid the same. Right. But if you're doing this and you figured out how to expedite your editing, how to expedite your Photoshop, how to make everything quicker, like one, you're going to be better at what you're doing. And then that work you put in, there's no limit to how much that could benefit you. Right. Like now you yeah. could learn how to, add graphs in your videos and that could be the, the 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 line that draws people in right like if you were on the cusp of of a thousand views for vi per video maybe like special edits and graphics will get you to the next level right so there's well, no even proof that, to the work you put in even the confidence of learning a new skill like fighting through the hard times of being new you know whether it's like my new microphone i didn't realize that with how my setup is that it sets up the microphone as my default audio out so like i recorded my new video like four or five times trying to figure out why i didn't have audio like it's showing up in obs it's showing up on my mic that it's working and whenever i'd go to edit the video there was nothing mm -hmm. and then i was like well maybe i'll just unplug the damn thing and see what happens you know four hours later now i have audio again because my laptop just wouldn't not recognize it as the audio out as well so like if you give up too early and you don't work on the skills, like there's just a shit ton of confidence that comes from doing something hard right eventually. And then doing it the next time a little bit faster. Like it's crazy how good that feels. It sounds so stupid. Like like uh one of the issues that I have is my laptop fan would kick on. And because I didn't have a mic that had any type of directional capabilities or anything, mm -hmm. like when you get picked up in my video and you'd hear the humming and you hear the scrolling of the mouse and the clicking. And then I found in uh, in Premiere Pro after watching some videos that there's an auto noise reduction and background noise remover. One click, I don't have to worry about like making my laptop so far away I can't see my screen or you know, just dumb little things. And that little like, ah, oh, I have a new skill now. Like, let's yep. go. What's what can I learn now? Yeah, so that's, silly that's... that it feels that good. Right. And it's, it's, it's just like, man, I was doing it the hard way. Like I was trying to move my computer across the room when all I had to do was <laughs> click a button. Right. So it's, right. it's funny. I've had, I've had my fair share of technical difficulties, like fucking zoom cut out on me when I was doing my wag me interview. Oh, uh, man. like they gave, they gave me the 40 minute. Well, it, it was my fault. Like I didn't know how to pay for zoom to go over 40 minutes. They're oh, like, yeah. all right, 40 minutes, your guys' shit is up. Right. But the week before wag me, the, 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 the video would lag it would like it would be choppy right so you could hear mm -hmm. the audio but uh the video would be choppy and uh you know like going into a wag me interview i didn't want any fuck ups or any technical difficulties so i tried to figure that out or you, you gotta lower your kbps whatever the hell that is and obs <laughs> or you gotta do all this shit like i didn't like to get the this the, this audio to where obs would hear it was such a pain in the ass i had to download this thing called like black hole and then i had to go into my sound settings and then do all that right but like i don't tell people this right like i wouldn't yeah. like because nobody's really gonna care so if you're looking at me as a content creator like oh it's super easy like i could probably do it too like yes you can do it as well it's just there's a lot of a lot of shit you gotta go through to to get it out and going you know yeah well Once and you like, get that you're smooth that's like bot lady with all of her overlays and her AI, you know, stuff that she does. Like, I'm just like, Oh my goodness. Like I'd be so afraid yeah. that something would mess up. Like just look at my shitty background. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bare minimum. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Does it look good? All right, cool. Let's roll. Yeah. And then you watch some of these TikToks that are like 90 seconds and it looks like it's in, it's in a cinema. I'm like, shit, I'm so bad at this. Yeah. Yeah. And TikTok's a great place to market as well, but like it's, as a content creator playing Zed Run and you can't rent out your horses right now, it's it's hard to hit all bases, you know? Yeah. It's hard to 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 post on TikTok, to to post on YouTube, post on Spotify, also generate money from your horses and then try and put out quality content. It yeah. it's it is a juggle. It is a and then juggle everyday life, right? Like okay, I guess something we didn't like really touch on like um like I I I, I would train martial arts after work every day, right? So I would get mm. up, go to work, uh, boom, go train martial arts, and cool. Now I found there's my life before diamonds, and then there's my life after diamonds. Life after diamonds was only Zed Run. I didn't go to the gym for like 
three months, right? Like mm. I let, I look at it as juggling, right? Like I, I let the gym ball fall and I was just juggling YouTube racing and, and Zed run. And so like now I've just picked it back up and to introduce that back into my lifestyle is it's, it, it's, it's, um, it's refreshing, but, uh, I would say content creation is just like, you're juggling, you know, you're juggling, mm. providing for your fan base and also living a life and, and enjoying your living your own life and enjoying yourself, I guess. Yeah. What, uh, what type of martial arts do you study? Just, uh, mixed martial arts. So like just okay. kickboxing, Muay Thai, boxing, jujitsu, submission, grappling, all that good stuff. Okay. Do you do I it competitively it. at all or just, uh, just to stay in shape and you enjoy it? that that's i i don't do it competitive competitively okay. yet but that's why i went with i'll give you some game i haven't told i've told a few people but like the uh, zed run isn't my end game right like okay. i i very purposely have my youtube as my name because like i i i'll do like mma content down the road whenever that time comes but i i have i have it as my name because whatever like it's just more it's easier to recognize somebody by their name than yep, their, their video game name that they go by it's fair enough well yeah, uh we'll so, have to stay in touch on that aspect too 100 percent, man 100 percent. i'll just say zed is zed isn't zed isn't the end game it's just uh like i just i i play zed and, and i train right now right so we'll see where it takes us but um yeah i love making content and um yeah, so we'll see we'll see where the future goes, man. I'm excited.